Hello again and welcome back to the fifth test in the test sequence, which is also the first of the so-called power on tests. And it describes the procedure to determine that automatic disconnection of supply and earth fault loop impedance is satisfactory. Our regulation 612.8 requires that verification of the effectiveness of the measures for fault protection by automatic disconnection of the supply is carried out. And Regulation 612.8.1 requires that compliance with Regulation 411.4 shall be verified for TN earthing systems by firstly, measurement of the earth fault loop impedance, and secondly, verification of the characteristics and or effectiveness of the associated protective device. This verification shall be made for overcurrent protective devices by visual inspection, meaning short, time or instantaneous settings for circuit breakers, current rating and type for fuses, and for RCDs by visual inspection and test. Automatic disconnection of supply requires that under fault conditions, the circuit breaker or fuse will operate and disconnect the supply to the line conductor within a specified maximum permitted disconnection time. For a TN earthing system, the maximum disconnection time for a final circuit with a protective device rating not exceeding 32 amps is 0.4 seconds. And for distribution circuits and for a circuit with a protective device with a rating exceeding 32 amps is 5 seconds, as per section 411 of BS7671. To achieve automatic disconnection, a low impedance path is necessary to allow sufficient current to flow to earth to cause the circuit breaker or fuse to operate and disconnect the supply within the required time. Protective earthing, as required by regulation 411.3.1, comprises of the installation, earthing conductor and the circuit protective conductors, the CPCs, for every circuit installed. These provide a means of connection to earth for the exposed conductive parts of installed equipment and form part of the low impedance path, which is known as the earth fault loop impedance. The amount of current flowing in the circuit during an earth fault condition is dependent on the earth fault loop impedance and can be determined by using the formula IF equals U0 over ZS, where IF is the fault current, U0 is the nominal supply voltage, and ZS is the maximum circuit earth fault loop impedance. Now please note, protective equipotential bonding is required to connect the main earthing terminal to extraneous conductive parts, such as water and gas installation pipes. However, the purpose of these is to limit the size of voltage which may appear on these parts before disconnection occurs, rather than as part of the earth fault loop impedance. The earth fault loop impedance comprises of the point of a fault, the circuit protective conductor, the consumer's earth terminal and earthing conductor. And for TN earthing systems, the metallic return path provided within the distributor supply cable, the path through the earth to neutral point of the distributor's transformer, the transformer winding and the line conductor from the transformer to the point of the fault. It can be seen from this that the earth fault loop impedance actually comprises of two parts. One, the earth fault loop impedance external to the installation, known as ZE, and secondly, the resistance of the line conductor and the resistance of the circuit protective conductor of a circuit combined, R1 plus R2. The earth fault loop impedance can be therefore be calculated using the formula ZS equals ZE plus R1 plus R2. Maximum earth fault loop impedance values, fuses and circuit breakers over current protective devices, have different operating characteristics depending on the product standard and type. And to ensure sufficient fault current is produced during a fault to cause operation, it's important that the earth fault loop impedance does not exceed the maximum impedance value necessary to achieve this. 
These maximum earth fault loop impedance ZS values are provided for the inspector's information in chapter 41 of BS 7671 in tables 41.2.3 and 0.4. This is table 41.3. Table 41.2 and 41.4 are specific to fuses, while Table 41.3 is relevant to the BSEN 60898 circuit breakers. The inspector must have knowledge of these tables, and also of the information contained in Appendix 14 of BS7671, which provides guidance on measurement of earth fault loop impedance and consideration of the increase of the resistance of conductors with increase of temperature. This should be considered when carrying out earth fault loop impedance tests to enable comparison of measured or calculated values obtained against the maximum values that will ensure automatic disconnection occurs during a fault. The inspector may alternatively refer to the information on earth fault loop impedance contained in the IET on the site guide. The tables given in Annex B of this publication have been adjusted to approximately 80% of the maximum values given in the tables 41.2.3.4 of BS7671 for the theoretical increase in temperature that may occur when the installation is in normal use. Regulation 612.9 requires that where protective measures are used which require knowledge of earth fault loop impedance, the relevant impedances shall be measured or determined by an alternative method. The earth fault loop impedance, or ZS, will require to be determined at the furthest point of each circuit. And this can be done by using an earth fault loop impedance test instrument or a multifunction test instrument set to the appropriate earth fault loop impedance setting. The Fluke multifunction test equipment being used has two loop setting options available. Using the rotary switch, the inspector can choose a high current test and a no trip test or low current test. The high current test passes a test current of up to 25 amps through the earth fault loop and obviously will trip any RCD in the circuit being tested. The no trip test or low current test only passes a test current of approximately 15 milliamps, so should not cause an RCD to operate and therefore would need to be used if an RCD is in the circuit being tested. However, there is a disadvantage to using this setting as it takes longer to measure a value and also does not provide the same accuracy of value as the high current setting. Also, it should be ensured that the line to protective earth L to PE loop impedance setting is selected using the push buttons provided to control the test. The first part of the test will be to verify the external earth fault loop impedance known as ZE, which is that part of the earth fault loop impedance path external to the installation. This can be determined by inquiry by contacting the distributor network organization who will provide industry values. For a TNS system, this can be up to 0.8 of an ohm, and for a TNCS system, it can be up to 0.35 of an ohm. It's recommended that a test of earth fault loop impedance is made to ensure that the distributor's earth terminal is actually connected to earth. This is a power on test, so great care is necessary to ensure safety during the test. It will also be necessary to use the appropriate fused test leads. In this instance, three wire test leads are necessary. Ensure that the main switch or disconnector at the distribution board is switched off and that all circuit protective devices are also switched to off. To measure the earth fault loop impedance external to the installation, disconnect the main earthing conductor from the earth bar and connect the earth test lead to it using a crocodile clip. This ensures that the installation is not connected to earth through an alternative means such as by a connection to a gas installation or water installation pipe. 
On the three-phase distribution board, we then apply the fused test probes to the incoming side of the switch disconnector with a test probe connection to the neutral conductor. Then, the other test probe is applied to the line conductor L1 and the test button is pressed to obtain a value. This is then repeated for the other line conductors L2 and L3 in turn. Note, on completion of the test, it's very important to remember to reconnect the main earthing conductor to the main earthing terminal. The three values measured should be noted, and it is the highest value obtained that will be recorded as the earth fault loop impedance at the DB. And it's recorded in ohms in the top left hand side of the schedule of test results. On larger installations, the earth fault loop impedance external to the installation may not be the incoming supply of the distribution board being worked on, as the actual incoming supply to the building may be located remote from this distribution board. The external earth fault loop impedance measured at the distribution board in this situation is therefore referred to as the ZS at DB. To obtain the earth fault loop impedance external to the installation at the actual incoming supply to the building may require an additional test to be carried out at this position, but can often be obtained simply by inquiry with the building owner or the supply distributor. On small installations, such as a dwelling, the situation is different as the incoming supply to the building is normally located close to the main distribution board or consumer unit. So an earth fault loop impedance test carried out here can be regarded as the earth fault loop impedance external to the incoming supply, ZE. The second part of the earth fault loop impedance test is then to determine the earth fault loop impedance at the furthest part of each circuit. As noted, during our demonstration of testing the continuity of protective conductors test method one, which measures the R1 plus R2 of the final circuit, we can simply add this value to the measured ZE value and record it as the earth fault loop impedance, the ZS of the circuit in the appropriate column of the schedule of test results. Alternatively, we can measure this using the earth fault loop impedance tester at the furthest part of the circuit. And we'll demonstrate this on the distribution circuit supplying the single phase distribution board. The main switch of the single phase distribution board is a 30 milliamp RCD. And also the main switch of the three phase distribution board supplying the distribution circuit is a 100 milliamp time delayed RCD. We will therefore need to select the no trip mode or low current setting on the multifunction test instrument to carry out this test. Again, safety is very important. Only switch on devices necessary for the test, i.e. the main switch on the TP and N distribution board and the circuit breaker supplying the sub distribution single phase distribution board. The test probes are applied as previously demonstrated and the test button operated. It's noted that the test takes slightly longer to measure and display the earth fault loop impedance due to the low current used. However, a value is obtained and this is recorded in the schedule of test results for the three phase distribution board. It would also be recorded on the top left hand side of the schedule of test results, which will be produced for the single phase distribution board. In this example, we measured a value of 0 0.50 ohms. For a 63 amp BSEN 60898 type B circuit breaker, this is given in table 41.3 as 0 0.69 ohms but would have to be adjusted by a factor of 0.8 to allow for theoretical increase in temperature. Referring to the temperature adjusted values in the IET on-site guide, Appendix B, Table B6, this table identifies the maximum value as 0.56 ohms, as the measured value of 0.5 ohms is less than this, well, it's satisfactory. 
We can then proceed to carry out the earth fault loop impedance tests for each circuit connected to the three phase distribution board. And for those connected to the single phase distribution board using one of the options outlined. So that then concludes this video. So now it's time to watch the next in the series on RCDs.